Hello friends, welcome to another video on Metcology tutorials. In this video, we will be talking about types of receptor theories. Before we begin, we regret that we were not able to upload videos at a pace that uh, most of our viewers wished the videos were uploaded. But we hope and believe that from now onwards, we will be able to increase the pace at which different videos will be uploaded. So let us start with today's uh, video lecture, which is uh, uh, types of receptor theories. Before we get into the actual types of receptor theories, we would I would like to emphasize a little bit on certain concepts, certain terms. The first concept or term that I want you all to revise or know is about drug. Now, what is a drug? It is a natural or a synthetic substance which has a physiological effect when administered into the body. The second important term that one, one has to know when we study receptor theories is what is a receptor. Receptor, uh, they are specific binding sites present on the cell surface made up of proteins or nucleic acid where a ligand can bind and initiate a characteristic response. Students, you have to remember here that uh, many MCQ questions were asked in the following manner in relation with receptors. They ask you what is a receptor and they give option A, B, C, D. Is it a um, uh, protein? Is it, a, uh, is it a, a chemical? Is it a drug? Etc. Etc. So the different MCQs are given. So please note one important point about receptor is they uh, it is made up of proteins or nucleic acid and they are found on the cell surface. How are ligands classified? Ligands in the sense compounds that bind to the receptors, we can consider them to be drugs also. Ligands are classified by effects upon binding to the receptor. They can be agonist, that means they activate that particular uh, receptor and there is a cascadic secondary effect that is seen or they could be antagonists, they block that receptor and do not allow any biological or pharmacological response to happen there. What are the types of agonists? We have three types of agonists. One is called as the full agonist. So we have full agonist. The other one is called as partial agonist. And the next one is called inverse agonist. What is a full agonist? A full agonist is one that will cause maximal response upon binding to the receptor. A partial agonist is one that will produce maximal response like full agonist. Very important to remember is when they are in excess amount. Because they are partial agonists, we need them to be more in quantity for them to activate the receptor the way a full agonist will it. Inverse agonists are the ones when they bind to the receptor, they will decrease the activity of an active receptor to their inactive state. So they will decrease the effect that we can see to understand what exactly is happening. As the concentration of the full agonist is increasing, the response is also increasing. As the concentration of full agon, uh, sorry, inverse agonist is increasing, we can see the effect of the particular uh, uh, compound is decreasing, or rather, the biological response is uh, decreasing. What are the types of antagonists? Antagonists are classified into two types: a reversible antagonist and irreversible antagonist. The name itself says one can be broken down back into individual state the other one cannot be now reversible are again of two types competitive and non-competitive again it is simple english one is competitively binding they compete to bind to the particular uh, receptor the other ones don't uh, uh, compete to bind to the receptor a competitive antagonist competes with the agonist for the orthosteric site for binding to the same receptor. So if you have an agonist and an antagonist and if that particular antagonist is competitive, it will fight for binding to that particular receptor site. A non-competitive one 
rather than fighting for the site will go and bind to other than orthosteric site so it will go and bind to some other site irreversible antagonists are those that may or may not compete with the agonist for the orthosteric site for binding to the receptor so they may or may not complete and uh, once they bind they are forming a very strong bond which cannot be now this particular concept we have already seen in my uh, introductory video so i just want to keep it very simple we all know that when a drug comes and binds to a receptor it will form a drug receptor complex this drug receptor complex will induce a pharmacological effect now this particular effect can be broken down or rather it can be uh, stopped rather it can be stopped if you are able to dissociate the drug and the receptor so you can stop the effect when again what happens the drug and the receptor they come back into the individual state where they were that is why you have two rate constants one is the binding that is the formation of the drug receptor which is seen as k1 and the reverse which is seen as k2 there are different forces that are involved in drug receptor interaction k on is the rate constant for formation of the drug receptor complex which depends on the concentration of the drug and the receptor that means more is the concentration of the drug more will be the binding of the drug with the receptor and more will be the action so they will be increasing the action that is what it says depends on the concentration of the drug and the receptor so more will be the drug then automatically you will have more receptors that will be bound and there will be increased action suppose there is more drug but there are no receptors present for that many drug molecules to bind then obviously you will not be having that particular effect seen what is k of k of is the rate constant for breakdown of the complex which depends on the concentration of drug receptor complex as well as other forces so k of is nothing but the reverse that is the drug receptor complex is now uh, going back into uh, the drug and receptor state that is it is going back to the individual state drug and receptor and you have k of here the biological activity of drug is related to its affinity for the receptor what is the meaning of this sentence more is the affinity of the drug to the receptor more will be the biological effect rather the drug will be binding to the means it will be in the bound state for a longer time and the action will continue for the longer time that is the stability of the drug receptor complex the stability is commonly measured by how difficult it is for the complex to dissociate which is measured by its kd the dissociation constant that is suppose if the dissociation constant is more then the drug will break from uh, the drug receptor complex format to an individual format and therefore the effect will also gone what are the interactions that play a role in the formation of the drug receptor complex this all we have seen in the uh, medchem part of the video so we have videos that cover hydrogen bonding and uh, van der waal forces covalent bonding we request you to kindly have a look at uh, our other videos that cover these particular topics so i will not go in detail because we have detailed videos where our chemistry uh, department has covered this particular concept so just to revise what all forces are involved we have ionic interactions ion dipole and dipole dipole then we have hydrogen bonding hydrophobic interaction van der waals interactions and covalent bond let's come to the theories of drug receptor interaction there are totally six theories that you have to remember there is the occupation theory rate theory induced fit theory macromolecular perturbation theory activation aggregation theory and the two state model of receptor activation theory occupation theory 
the name itself gives you an idea something is getting occupied so what is getting occupied drugs act on binding sites and activate them resulting in a biological response that is proportional to the amount of drug receptor complex formed the response ceases when this complex dissociates this is very important to sum up what exactly this theory is it is nothing but intensity of pharmacological effect is directly proportional to the number of receptors occupied that is the concept of occupational theory if you want more pharmacological effect you need more number of receptors being occupied by the drug if you have fever and you want the particular body temperature to come down you need your receptor to go and buy you sorry you need your drug to go and bind to receptors the more the receptors are bound the quicker you will have reduction in fever response is proportional to the fraction of occupied receptors maximal response occurs when all receptors are occupied i hope this gives you a clarity on occupation theory theory the next theory is rate theory this also is quite similar to occupation theory but here we talk about the rate at which this particular binding is happening what binding the drug receptor complex being formed so the response is proportional to the rate of drug receptor complex formation what response the pharmacological physiological response is proportional to the rate of drug receptor complex formation activation of receptors is proportional to the total number of encounters of a drug with its receptor according to this view the duration of receptor occupation determines whether a molecule is an agonist or partial agonist this is another important terminology duration of receptor occupation what is the meaning of duration of receptor occupation if it is an agonist it will stay longer there so that it will cause more action to take place so the compound will be bound for a pretty long time compared to a partial agonist and the longer the uh, the drug is bound to that particular receptor the longer will be the action of that particular compound induced fit theory but here we are talking happening uh in a particular manner with an agonist and with an activation theory we found out that the receptor is in dynamic equilibrium that dynamic equilibrium can be shifted towards the active site when the uh, particular uh, agonist binds nothing but uh, extension of the activation aggregation theory a receptor in its active state will ultimately elicit its biological response it was first described by black and left in 1983 as an alternative model of receptor activity the uh, receptor is in two equilibrium situations r stands for the resting and r uh, star stands for the active a full agonist will bind only to r star whereas an inverse agonist will bind only to r that completes our receptor theories we uh, thank you uh, for staying tuned to our videos please do subscribe and share and uh, please stay tuned and continue to support us for more videos thank you